Welcome to Haxby Shed. For the first time in more than a year, I managed to get to the auto jumble. And I bought these items, each for one pound. A braised turning tool, an Isgar parting tool, three taps, all Whitworth, five eighths, three quarter, seven sixteenths, probably none of which I will ever use, but I bought them because they were shiny and nice. And then these two clamps from V-Blocks, because quite often you see V-Blocks for sale, but no clamps. So for one pound each, I thought, lucky dip, I'll just buy them. Putting these to one side then, let me show you what else I bought. Oh, one Eclipse magnetic table. I had it in mind to buy a magnetic table from the Auto Jumble if I could find one. And uh, almost the first stall I came to had this. It was £35. I don't know if I got a good deal or not. Uh, it was just, you know, excited because it's the first time I've been to the Auto Jumble in so long. I thought, heck, I'll just buy it. No handle. No way of testing it at the time. But I managed to get this handle for a couple of quid. Now it, you can see this is square and this isn't, but I can just machine this out a little bit, cut a slot in it, and then I'll be able to use it as the handle for this. It was very stiff. I have turned this with a pair of pliers and it was very stiff. And I haven't been able to test just how magnetic it is yet. I thought about stripping it down, taking the bottom off, but there's a warning on the bottom. I don't know if you'll be able to read that, but it says, you try looking at that. But I'll tell you what it says. It says dismantling. Cannot lose magnetism except by dismantling. Service by makers only. So it warns you not to take it apart. I've watched a few people on YouTube take them apart. And it's a bit of a struggle. So, hmm. I took the oil plug out here. And uh, when I looked inside, it was all pretty dry and brown. It wasn't seized. So I've had it soaking with oil inside for about a week, actually. And then, uh, you know, I'll drain that oil out. Maybe put some brake cleaner in, put some fresh oil in and see where we get to. Somebody has tried to take the screws out. I can see they're a bit mashed up. And there's also a number of pins which you need to get out to get the base off. And somebody's had a go at those. But I don't think they've taken them out. This is half inch. So I'll start by just machining this out to half an inch. The drive pin on the vise is 4mm diameter, so I've drilled a 4mm hole and I'll just slot the top of this key here with a hacksaw and then file it to fit. Let's try it out. So, put that on there and see if I can lift it. Well, I think fairly conclusively that works and it looks like it was 35 quid well spent. Bit of a risk, but I think it's paid off. So now I need to clean it out, drain the oil, polish up the outside a bit. Ugh, that's just sludge in there with the oil that I put in, of course. Mmm, ugh, goo. Well, it's going to take a bit of cleaning out, but I'm not going to dismantle it because it's working. There's some of the goo. Oops. <laughs> Go away. Brake cleaner. Ugh. 
I'll just keep working that now. Drain this off, put some fresh oil in. And I think we'll be all right then. We'll clean all these threads out. They're just full of rubbish. Yep. And this one to come off. So the next job is to figure out how I could fit that to the shaper table. The magnetic vise perhaps looks a little bit big for this shaper table, but I think it'll be fine. I can make a bracket here and a bracket at the back and I can clamp it down here and correspondingly at the back. And then I can also put it this way if I've got a clamping bracket here. If I pull it forward a bit, I can put a bolt at the back corner, left hand corner there. So I think actually it should work quite well. I can put this on so that when the tool is pushing the work this direction, this will stop the work being pushed off the table. So I know what I want and I'll get those bits of metal ordered up on eBay now. The metal to make the clamping brackets for my magnetic table has arrived. So the first thing I'm going to do with these is to cut them in half. That's all four pieces trimmed to the same length now. That's three holes drilled in each plate. Now I've made these holes exact size. They're six millimetre holes for six millimetre screws. So we'll see if it's going to line up. It's quite strongly magnetic on this side as well. Just check it. Mm, that's about it, I think. Cross your fingers. Well, we'll see. Number three. No more than finger tight anyway. That's all three in. Well, that's a bit of luck. <laughs> I bet it's not as good on the other side. And that goes right down to the base. And it just sticks up a fraction. Haven't decided yet um, whether to trim that or not, but it's easy to trim once I get the bracket made down the bottom here and welded on. I just set it on the shaper and just trim the top. And then these will go like that, look. And I'll machine three loops in here for these three T-slots to line up with. And just put a weld down here and try to do it so that it doesn't banana like that. <laughs> we, we shall see, we shall see. Maybe with it clamped down, if I weld it then, it might um, not kick up. This is the second plate. It's clear at this end and this end. It's a bit tight on this one. I might just have to file it ever so slightly. The next thing I want to do for the plate on this side where the handle is, is to make a cutaway so that this plate goes that way so it will be a cutaway there so it goes past and behind the handle so I need to mark that on now I've marked on here the centre line of this shaft and I've marked there 
where the slot has to stop, which is about there. Now I could now drill a hole there, then get a hacksaw and cut two slots and then not quite get it right and then file it and all that. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use this 15 millimeter end mill and I'm going to set it up in the lathe with my milling attachment and mill it across here like that. Now it's a bit of trouble to go to to make this one slot but actually I have to make six slots don't I? Because this will go on this place and I need a slot to correspond in this plate with each of these T-slots. And I'm planning to do those on the lathe if I can with a milling attachment. So this will be a practice go, <laughs> hopefully a good practice go for cutting the slots that I'll need in here, three on each side for the two base plates there. I've just taken off the drawbar I made for the tailstock power feed. I haven't quite finished it yet. Needs a little bit trimming off here. Needs a bit cleaning up, might paint it. I might put a fillet in here just to give this bracket a bit more strength. But otherwise, I think that project went pretty well. I made a video on it, you've uh, maybe seen it. Or maybe you can find it if you want to. For the first slot that I need to cut, rather than using the milling attachment, I'm going to mount this angle plate on here, on the cross slide. I've been thinking about doing it for quite some time and this will give me the reason to do it. And then I can clamp this onto here like that. And then I can mill the slot over here. So to fit this to this, I need to drill these holes in this and machine out this peg, which I think is a three quarter. I'd never make an artist. About level. About level. So it's all clamped down. Start with a pilot drill. Put my drill on to top speed for cast iron. Three and a half millimeter drill. Eight millimeter. Seventeen and a half millimeter. I prefer really to have an eighteen, but I don't have it because three quarters is about nineteen millimeter. But I think we'll be all right for reaming a three quarter with this. So a ream is in and I'm only going to go in six millimetres because that's all I need for it to drop on the peg on the lathe. And in fact, if I'd been smarter, I didn't really need to drill all the way through with a 17 and a half. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. Well, that worked. I was taking a bit more off with that reamer than I really should have done. But with a bit of patience, it's fine. Now I'll drill the other two holes. Don't know if it's gonna fit because the tolerances were a bit tight and it's very difficult to get the drill spotted on the centre punch exactly. So there might be a bit of fiddling or filing to do yet, but we'll see. Well, with a bit of messing about, I got it on. The problem seems to be, if I use the big pillar drill, quite often the holes are a bit off. If I use a little model maker's drill, I can normally get them spot on. But this is too big for my little model maker's drill. It's quite good because I can just unnip those and I can swivel it just like you would swivel the top slide. So I think this is going to be quite a useful attachment. We're not working to absolute precision. 
So I can set this square to the front of these jaws and that will be good enough. So now I can set up my plate and set up the end mill in an ER32 collar. There we are, nearly ready to go. I've used these two T-slot nuts and screws together to form a ledge to support my plate. I used my level to measure the level on the cross slide and then put my level there to set it up the same. We're not working to absolute precision as we said. It's near enough for this. And now I can use this G-clamp as we call them. A little bit of hard board either side. Clamp that up tight. I've set up my cross slide stop so it's set to the right depth here. I had to adjust this obviously to get the height right for this 15 millimeter end mill to fit within my uh, guidelines which are marked on. I've set up my dial gauge here so I can measure the cut depth as I move the saddle to the left. Not bad. Well the plate fits and it operates. But it might have been better if I'd made this slot a kind of keyhole shape so that this end would take that and therefore this would go on further. But it doesn't matter for now. I can modify it if I wish to, can't I? So the next thing to do... Oh, it's stuck. So the next thing to do... <laughs> is to think about this. And I had intended to put slots in here to correspond with these T-slots. But it might be just good enough if I drilled a series of holes. Just keep life simple for myself. I'll think about that before I move on to that stage. Ten millimeter holes, perhaps. <laughs> 